Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Thou didst form to sport in it, 
These all look to thee to give them their food in due season. When thou givest to them, they gather it up. When thou openest thy hand, they are filled with good things. When thou hidest thy face, they are dismayed. When thou takest away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. Who looks on the earth and trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise I will sing praise to my God while I have my being. May my meditation be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let sinners be consumed from the earth, and let the wicked be no more. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Glory to thee, O God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. O the peace of God for the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and for the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy monastery, for those with faith and reverence, and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For if they have a surrender to fall to the chief for his eminence, our Archbishop Nathaniel, for the honorable priesthood and the actor to Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the brethren of our country, for all civil authorities, and for our armed forces everywhere, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have Sisterhood of this holy monastery, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this city, for every city, village, and country, and for the faithful dwelling in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For seasonable weather, for the abundance of the fruits of the earth, and for peaceful times, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In my air for the sick and the suffering, for captives and their salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and necessity, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and keep us, O God, by your grace. Lord have Most blessed and glorious Lady Theotokos, and ever virgin bearer of all the saints, let us commend ourselves and each other and our life unto Christ our God. For on the view of you all glory, honor, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages.
your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Pascha. Wisdom. The reading is from the prophecy of Jonah. Let us attend. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah rose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. He went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare and went on board to go with them to Tarshish, away from the presence of the Lord. But the Lord hurled a great wind upon the sea, and there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship threatened to break up. Then the mariners were afraid, and each cried to his God, and they threw the wares that were in the ship into the sea to lighten it for them. But Jonah had gone down into the inner part of the ship and had laid down and was fast asleep. So the captain came and said to him, What do you mean, you sleeper? Arise, call upon your God. Perhaps God will save us that we do not perish. And they said to one another, Come, let us cast lots, that we may know on whose account this evil has come upon us. So they cast lots, and the lot fell upon Jonah. Then they said to him, Tell us on whose account this evil has come upon us. What is your occupation, and whence do you come? What is your country, and of what people are you? And he said to them, I am a Hebrew, and I fear the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the dry land. Then the men who were exceedingly afraid and said to him, What is this that you have done? For the men knew that he was fleeing from the presence of the Lord, because he had told them. Then they said to him, What shall we do to you, that the sea may quiet down for us? The sea grew more and more tempestuous. He said to them, Take me up and throw me into the sea, then the sea will quiet down for you, for I know it is because of me that this great tempest has come upon you. Nevertheless, the men rode hard to bring the ship back to land, but they could not, for the sea grew more and more tempestuous against them. <clears throat> Therefore, <clears throat> they cried to the Lord, <clears throat> We beseech thee, O Lord, let us not perish for this man's life, and lay not on us innocent blood, for thou, O Lord, hast done it as, it as pleased thee. So they took up Jonah and threw him into the sea, and the sea ceased from its raging. Then the men feared the Lord exceedingly, and they offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made vows. And the Lord appointed a great whale to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights. Then Jonah prayed to the Lord, his God, from the belly of the whale, saying, I called to the Lord out of my distress, and he answered me, Out of the belly of shale I cried, and thou didst hear my voice, for thou didst cast me into the deep, into the heart of the seas, and the flood was round about me. All thy waves and thy billows passed over me. Then I said, I am cast out from thy presence, how shall I again look upon thy holy temple? The waters closed in over me, the deep was round about me, weeds were wrapped about my head at the roots of the mountains. I went down to the land whose bars closed upon me forever, yet thou didst bring up my life from the pit, O Lord my God. When my soul fainted within me, I remembered the Lord, and my prayer came to me into thy holy temple. Those who pay regard to vain idols forsake their true loyalty. But I, with the voice of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to thee. What I have vowed I will pay. Deliverance belongs to the Lord. And the Lord spoke to the whale, and it cast out Jonah upon the dry land. <clears throat> then the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah arose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly great city, three days' journey in breadth. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's journey. And he cried, Yet forty days, and Nineveh will shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed it fast, and put on sackcloth, from the greatest of them to the least of them. Then tidings reached the king of Nineveh, and he arose from his throne, removed his robe, and covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes, and he made proclamation and published through Nineveh 
by the decree of the king and his nobles, let neither man nor beast, herd nor flock, taste anything. Let them not feed or drink water, but let man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and let them cry mightily to God. Yea, let everyone turn from his evil way and from the violence which is in his hands. Who knows, God may yet repent and turn from his fierce anger, so that we perish not. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil way, God repented of the evil which he had said he would do to them, and he did not do it. But it displeased Jonah exceedingly, and he was troubled, and he prayed to the Lord and said, I pray thee, Lord, is not this what I said when I was yet in my country? That is why I made haste to flee to Tarshish. For I knew that thou art a gracious God, and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love, and repentest of evil. Therefore now, O Lord, take my life from me, I beseech you, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Do you do well to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city, and sat at the east of the city, and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, till he should see what would come of the city. And the Lord God <clears throat> appointed a plant and made it come up over Jonah, that it might be a shade over his head to save him from discomfort. So Jonah was exceedingly glad because of the plant. But when dawn came up the next day, God appointed a worm which attacked the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God appointed a sultry east wind, and the sun beat upon the head of Jonah so that he was faint, and he asked that he might die, and said, It is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Do you do well to be angry for the plant? And he said, I do well to be angry, angry enough to die. And the Lord said, You pity the plant for which you did not labor, nor did you make it grow, which came into being in a night, and perished in a night. And should I not pity Nineveh? that great city in which there are more than 120,000 persons who do not know their right hand from their left and also much cattle. Wisdom. The reading is from the book of Joshua. Let us <laughs> While the people of Israel were encamped in Gigal, they kept the Passover on the 14th day of the month at evening in the plains of Jericho. And on the morrow after the Passover, on that very day, they ate of the produce of the land, unleavened cakes and parched grain. And the manna ceased on the morrow, when they ate of the produce of the land. And the people of Israel had manna no more, but ate of the fruit of the land of the Phoenicians that year. When Joshua was by Jericho, he lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, a man stood before him with his drawn sword in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? And he said, No, but as a commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. And Joshua fell on his face to the earth and worshipped and said to him, What does my Lord bid his servant? And the commander of the Lord's army said to Joshua, Put off your shoes from your feet, for the place where you stand is holy. And Joshua did so. Wisdom. The reading is from Exodus. Let us attend. And they moved on from Succoth, and encamped in Bethlehem, on the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by the day in the pillar of the cloud to lead them along the way, and by night in the pillar of fire to give them light and that they might travel by night and day. The pillar of the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night did not depart from before the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell the people of Israel to turn back and encamp in front of Piathotopa, because Midgoth, Midgoth in the sea, in front of Basilon, you shall encamp over it by the sea, for Pharaoh will say of the people of Israel, they are entangled in the land, the wilderness hath shut them in, and I will harden Pharaoh's heart, and he will pursue them, and I will get glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, and the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, and they did so. When the king of Egypt 
was told that the people had fled. The mind of Pharaoh and his servants were changed toward the people, and they said, What is this that we have done, that we have let Israel go back serving us? So he made ready his chariot and took his army with him, and took six hundred picked chariots and all the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. And the Lord hardened the hearts of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and he pursued the people of Israel as they went forth defiantly. The Egyptians pursued them, all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and his horsemen in the army, and overtook them encamped at the sea by Pihavah in front of Basipon. <laughs> when Pharaoh drew near, the people of Israel lifted up their eyes and said, Behold, the Egyptians were marching after them, and they were in great fear. And the people of Israel cried out to the Lord, and they said to Moses, Is it because there was no graves in Egypt that you have taken us away to die in the wilderness? What have you done to us in bringing us out of Egypt? Is not this what we said to you in Egypt? Let us alone and let us serve the Egyptians, for it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the wilderness. And Moses said to the people, Fear not, stand firm, and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will work for you today. For the Egyptians whom you see today you shall never see again. The Lord will fight for you, and you shall only have to be still. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? Tell the people of Israel to go forward. Lift up your rod and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it. And the people of Israel may go on dry ground through the sea. And I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they shall go forth in after. Then after I will give glory over Pharaoh and all his hosts, his chariots and his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gotten glory over Pharaoh, his chariots and his horsemen. Then the angel of God, who went before the host of Israel, moved and went behind him. And the pillar of clouds moved from before them and stood behind them, coming between the host of Egypt and the host of Israel. And there was a cloud in the darkness, and the night passed without one coming near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord drove the sea back by a strong cast wind all night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the people of Israel went into the midst of the sea on dry ground, the waters being walled to them on their right hand and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went in after them into the midst of the sea, all Pharaoh's horses, his chariots, and his horsemen. And in the morning watched the Lord in the pillar of fire and of the cloud looked down upon the host of the Egyptians and discomfited the host of the Egyptians, clogging their chariot wheels so that they drove heavily. And the Egyptians said, Let us free from before Israel, for the Lord fights for them against the Egyptians. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, and the waters may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. So Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to its wonted flow when the morning appeared. And the Egyptians fled into it, and the Lord brought to the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen and all the hosts of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea. Not, not so, so much as one of them remained, but the people of Israel walked on dry land through the sea, the waters being a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Then the Lord said to Israel that day from the hand of the Egyptians, and the Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore, and Israel saw the great work which the Lord did against the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and they believed in the Lord and his servant Moses. Then Moses and the 
children of Israel sang the song to the Lord, and they spoke, saying, Let us sing to the Lord. Yes. 
nations, to assemble kingdoms, to pour out upon them my indignation, all the heat of my anger. For in the fire of my jealous wrath, all the earth shall be consumed. Yea, at the time I will change the speech of the peoples to a pure speech, that all of them may call on the name of the Lord, and serve him with one accord. From beyond the rivers of Ethiopia, my suppliants, the daughter of my dispersed one, shall bring my offering. On that day you shall not be put to shame because of the deeds by which you have rebelled against me. For then I will remove from your midst your proudly exalted ones, and you shall no longer be haughty in my holy mountain. For I will leave in the midst of you a people humble and lowly. They shall seek refuge in the name of the Lord. Those who are left in Israel, they shall do no wrong and utter no lies. Nor shall there be found in their mouth a deceitful tongue. For they shall pasture and lie down, and none shall make them afraid. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel. Rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cast out your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord is in your midst. You shall see evil no more. With the Lord. The reading is from the third book of Kings. Let us then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, saying, Arise, go to Zephyrath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Behold, I have commanded a widow there to feed you. So he arose and went to Zephyrath. And when he came to the gate of the city, behold, a widow was there gathering sticks. And he called to her and said, Bring me a little water in the vessel that I may drink. And as she was going to bring it, he called her and said, Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand. And she said, As the Lord your God lives, I have nothing baked, only a handful of meal in a jar, and a little oil in a purse, cruise. And now I am gathering a couple of sticks, that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son, that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, Fear not, go and do as you have said. But first make me a little cake of it, and bring it to me, and afterward make for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, The jar of meal shall not be spent, and the cruise of oil shall not fail, until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did as Elijah said, and she and he and her household ate for many days. The jar of meal was not spent, neither did the cruise of oil fail, according to the word of the Lord which he spoke by Elijah. After this, the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, became ill, and his illness was so severe that there was no breath left in him. And she said to Elijah, What have you against me, O man of God? You have come to me to bring my sin to remembrance and to, the cause, and to cause the death of my son. And he said to her, Give me your son. And he took him upon her bosom, and carried him up to the upper chamber where, she, where he lodged, and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, hast thou brought calamity even upon the widow with whom I sojourned by saying, Slay her son. Then he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord my God, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord hearkened to the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came into him again. And he revived, and Elijah took the child and brought him down from the upper chamber into the house, and delivered them to his mother. And Elijah said, See, your son lives. And the woman said to Elijah, Now that I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in your mouth is true. Wisdom. The reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. Let us attend. My soul shall rejoice in the Lord, for he has clothed me with the garment of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland, and as a bride adorns herself with jewels. For as the earth brings forth its shoots, and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. For Zion's sake I will not keep silent, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until until her vindication goes forth as brightness, and her salvation as a burning torch. The nations shall see you, shall see your vindication, and all the kings your glory. 
And you shall be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord will give. You shall be a crown of beauty in the hand of the Lord, and a royal diadem in the hand of your God. You shall no more be termed forsaken, and your land shall no more be termed desolate. But you shall be called my delight in her, in your land married. For the Lord delights in you, and your land shall be married. For as a young man marries a virgin, so shall your sons marry you. And as the bridegroom rejoices over the bride, so shall your God rejoice over you. Wisdom. The reading is from Genesis. After these things, God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Take your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering upon one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, saddled his ass, and took two of his young men with him, and his son Isaac. And he cut the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. On the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the places afar off. <clears throat> then Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the ass. I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. So they went, both of them, together. And Isaac said to his father, Abraham, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. He said, Behold the fire and the wood, for where is the lamb for a burnt offering? Abraham said, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering, my son. So they went, both of them, together. When they came to the place of which God had told him, Abraham built an altar there and laid the wood in order, and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Then Abraham put forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. And he said, Here am I. He said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, seeing you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by his, by his horns. And Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up as a burnt offering instead of his son. So Abraham called the name of that place, the Lord has seen, and it is said to this day, on the mount the Lord was seen. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time from heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will indeed bless you. And I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as the sands which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gates of their enemies, and by your descendants shall all the nations of the earth bless themselves, because you have obeyed my voice. Wisdom. The reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good tidings to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to grant to those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, <coughs> that he may be glorified. They shall build up the ancient ruins. They shall raise up the former devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many generations. Aliens shall stand and feed your flocks. Foreigners shall be your plowmen and vine dressers. But you shall be called the priests of the Lord. Men shall speak of you as the ministers of our God. You shall eat the wealth of nations, and in their riches you shall glory. Instead of your shame, you shall have a double portion. Instead of dishonor, you shall rejoice in your lot. Therefore, in your land, you shall possess a double portion. Yours shall be everlasting joy. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring in the midst of the peoples. 
All who see them shall acknowledge them that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed, and they shall be greatly rejoice in the Lord. The reading is from the fourth book of Kings. <coughs> One day Misha went on to Shunem, where a wealthy woman lived, who urged him to eat some food. So whenever he passed that way, he would turn in there to eat food. And she said to her husband, Behold now, I perceive that this is a holy man of God, who is continually passing our way. Let us make a small roof chamber with walls and put there for him a bed, a table, a chair, and a lamp, so that whenever he comes to us, he can go in there. One day he came there, and he turned into the chamber and rested there, and he said to Gehazi, his servant, Call the Shudami. When he had called her, she stood before him, and he said to him, Say now to her, See, you have taken all this trouble for us. What is to be done for you? Would you have a word spoken on your behalf to the king or to the commander of the army? She answered, I dwell among my own people. And he said, What then is to be done for her? Gehazi answered, Well, she has no son, and her husband is old. He said, Call her. And when he had called her, she stood in the doorway, and he said, At this season, when the time comes round, you shall embrace a son. And she said, No, my lord, O man of God, do not lie to your maidservant. But the woman conceived, and she bore a son about that time, the following spring, as Elisha had said to her. When the child had grown, he went out one day, he went out one day to his father among the reapers, and he said to his father, O oh, my head, my head. The father said to his servant, Carry him to his mother. And when he had lifted him and brought him to his mother, the child sat on her lap till noon, and then he died. And she went up and laid him on the bed of the man of God, and shut the door upon him and went out. Then she called to her husband and said, Send me one of the servants and one of the asses, that I may quickly go to the man of God and come back again. And he said, Why will you go to him today? It is neither new moon nor Sabbath. She said, It will be well. Then she saddled the ass, and she said to her servant, Urge the beast on, do not slacken the pace for me unless I tell you. So she set out and came to the man of God at Mount Carmel. When the man of God saw her coming, he said to Gehazi his servant, Look, yonder is the Shunami. Run at once to meet her and say to her, Is it well with you? Is it well with your husband? Is it well with the child? And she answered, It is well. And when she came to the mountain, to the man of God, she caught hold of his feet, and Gehazi came to thrust her away. But the man of God said, Let her alone, for she is in bitter distress, and the Lord has hidden it from me, and has not told me. Then she said, Did I ask my Lord for a son? Did I not say, Do not deceive me? He said to Gehazi, Gird up your loins, and take my staff in your hand, and go. If you meet anyone, do not salute him, and if anyone salutes you, do not reply, and lay my staff upon the face of the child. Then the mother of the child said, As the Lord lives, and as you yourself live, I will not leave you. So he arose and followed her. Gehazi went on ahead and laid the staff upon the face of the child, but there was no sound or sign of life. Therefore he returned to meet him and told him, The child has not awaked. When Elisha came into the house, he saw the child lying dead on his bed. So he went in and shut the door upon the two of them and prayed to the Lord. Then he went up and lay upon the child, putting his mouth upon his mouth, his eyes upon his eyes, and his hand, hands upon his hands. And as he stretched himself upon him, the flesh of the child became warm. Then he got up again and walked once to and fro in the house and went up and stretched himself upon him. The child sneezed seven times, and the child opened his eyes. Then he summoned Gehazi and said, Call the Shunami. So he called her, and when she came to him, he said, Take up your son. She came and fell at his feet, bowing to the ground. Then she took up her son and went out. Wisdom. The reading is from the prophecy of Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Where is he who brought up out of the sea the shepherd of his sheep? Where is he who put in the midst of them his Holy Spirit? 
who caused his glorious arm to go at the right hand of Moses, who divided the water before them to make for himself an everlasting name, who led them through the depths like a horse in the desert. They did not stumble. Like cattle that go down into the valley, the Spirit of the Lord gave them rest. So thou didst lead thy people to make for thyself a glorious name. Look down from heaven and see, from thy holy and glorious habitation. Where are thy zeal and with thy might? The yearning of thy heart and thy compassion are withheld from me. For thou art our God, though Abraham does not know us, and Israel does not acknowledge us. Thou, O Lord, art our Father, our Redeemer, from the old from of old is thy name. O Lord, why dost thou make us err from thy ways and harden our heart, so that we fear thee not? Return for the sake of thy servants, the tribes of thy heritage. Thy holy people possess thy sanctuary a little while. Our adversaries have trodden it down. We have become like those over whom thou hast never ruled, like those who are not called by thy name. O oh, that thou wouldst rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at thy presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil, to make thy name known to thy adversaries, and that the nations might tremble at thy presence. When thou didst terrible things which we looked not for, thou camest down, the mountains quaked at thy presence, from of old, no one has heard or perceived by the ear. No eye has seen a God besides thee, who works for those who wait for him. Thou meetest him that joyfully works righteousness, those that remember thee in thy ways. Wisdom. The reading is from the prophecy of Jeremiah. Let us attend. Thus says the Lord, Behold, the days are when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah, not like the covenant which I made with their fathers when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, my covenant which they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant which I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, I will write it upon their hearts, I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And no longer shall each man teach his neighbor and each his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. Wisdom. The reading is from the prophecy of Daniel. Let us again. In the eighteenth year, King Nebuchadnezzar <coughs> made a gold image of gold whose height was sixty cubits in its breadth, six cubits, and he set it upon the plain of Gura in the province of Babylon. Then King Nebuchadnezzar sent to assemble the satraps, the prefects, and the governors and the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to the dedication of the image which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces were assembled for the dedication of the image of King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O peoples, nations, and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the people heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image of the king that which King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Therefore, at that time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. They said to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. You, O king, have made a decree that every man who hears the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music shall fall down and worship the golden image. And whoever does not fall down and worship will be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. There are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon 
Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no heed to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then King Nebuchadnezzar, in furious rage, commanded that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be brought. When they brought these men to the king, Nebuchadnezzar said to them, It is true, o, is it true, O Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the golden image which I have set up? Now, if you are ready, when you hear the sound of the horn, high flyer, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, to fall down and worship the image which I have made well and good. But if you do not worship, you shall immediately be cast into a burning, fiery furnace. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If it be so, our God, whom we serve in the heavens, able to deliver us from the burning fiery, fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand, O king. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods, or worship the golden image which you have set up. Then Nebuchadnezzar was full of fury, and the expression on his face was changed against Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He ordered the furnace heated seven times more than it was wont to be heated. And he ordered certain mighty men of his army to bind Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and cast them into the burning fiery furnace. Then these men were bound in their mantles, their tunics, their hats, and other garments, and they were cast into the burning fiery furnace. Because the king's order was strict and the furnace very hot, the flame of fire flew, slew those men who took up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And these three men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, fell into the burning fiery furnace. And they talked, and they walked about in the midst of the flames, singing hymns to God and blessing the Lord. Then Azariah stood and offered this prayer. In the midst of the fire, he opened his mouth and he said, Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, and worthy of praise, and thy name is glorified forever. For thou art just in all that thou hast done to us, and all thy works are true, and thy ways are right, and all thy judgments are true. Thou hast executed true judgments in all that thou hast brought upon us and upon, it, and upon Jerusalem, the holy city of our fathers, for in truth and justice Thou hast brought all this upon us because of our sins. For we have sinfully and lawlessly departed from Thee. We have sinned in all things and have not obeyed Thy commandments. We have not observed them or done them, as Thou hast commanded us that it might go well with us. So all that Thou hast brought upon us and all that Thou hast done to us, Thou hast done in true judgment. Thou hast given us into the hands of lawless enemies, most hateful rebels, and to an unjust king, the most wicked in all the world. And now we cannot open our mouths. Shame and disgrace has befallen thy servants and worshippers. For thy name's sake, do not give us up utterly, and do not break thy covenant, and do not withdraw thy mercy from us, for the sake of Abraham, thy beloved, and for the sake of Isaac, thy servant, and Israel, thy holy one to whom thou didst promise to make their descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as the sand on the shores of the sea. For we, Lord, have become fewer than any nation. We are brought low this day in all the world because of our sins. And at this time there is no prince, no prophet, no leader, no burnt offering, no sacrifice, no oblation, and no incense, and no place to make an offering before thee or to find mercy. Yet, with a contrite heart and a humble spirit, may we be accepted, as though it were with burnt offerings of rams and bulls and with tens of thousands of fat lambs, such may our sacrifice be in thy sight this day. And may we wholly follow thee, for there will be no shame for those who trust in thee. And now with all our heart we follow thee, we fear thee, and we seek thy face. Do not put us to shame, but deal with us in thy forbearance and in thine abundant mercy. Deliver us in accordance with thy marvelous works, and give glory to thy name, O Lord. Let all do, who do harm to thy servants be put to shame. 
Let them be disgraced and deprived of all power and dominion, and let their strength be broken. And let them know that thou art the Lord, the only God, glorious over the whole world. Now the king's servants who threw them into the fought into the now the king's servants who threw them in did not cease feeding the furnace fires with naphtha, pitch, tow, and brush, and the flame spread streamed <laughs> out above the furnace forty-nine cubits, and it broke through and burned those of the Chaldeans who had caught about in the furnace. But the angel of the Lord came down into the furnace to be with Azariah and his companions, and drove the fiery flame out of the furnace. And made the midst of the furnace like a moist whistling wind, so that the fire did not touch them at all or hurt or trouble them. Then the three as with one mouth praised and glorified and blessed God in the furnace, saying, Blessed art thou, O Lord God of our fathers, and be praised and highly exalted forever. And blessed is thy glorious holy name to be highly praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed art thou in the temple of thy glory to be extolled and highly glorified forever. Blessed art thou who sittest upon the cherubim and lookest down upon the deeps, to be praised and highly exalted forever. Blessed art thou upon the throne of thy kingdom, to be, to be extolled and highly exalted forever. Blessed art thou in the firmament of heaven, to be sung and glorified forever. Again and again. 
Let all the earth worship thee and praise thee, let it praise. 
Apostle Paul to the Romans. Let us sit in. Brethren, do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried, therefore, with him by baptism into death, so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him so that the sinful body might be destroyed <laughs> and we might no longer be enslaved to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. But if we have died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. For we know that Christ being raised from the dead will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death Christ died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you must also consider yourselves <laughs> dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. Spirit, arise, O God, and judge the earth, for to thee belong all the nations.
and with fear and with great joy, and ran to bring his disciples word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, Rejoice. So they came and held him by his feet and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brethren and go to Galilee, and therefore they will see me. Now while they were going, the call some of the guard came into the city and reported to the chief priest all the things that had happened. And when they had assembled with the elders and consulted together, they gave a large sum of money to the soldiers, saying, Tell them his disciples came at night and stole him away while we slept. And if this comes to the governor's ear, we will appease him and make you secure. So they took the money and did as they were instructed. And this saying, this saying is commonly reported among the Jews until this day. And then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had appointed them. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Amen. Serving by Paul, celebrating his birthday today. For all those who are 
sickness, ill health, and in suffering, and for the pardon and remission of their sins. Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy and venerable house, for those who labor and those who sing, for all the people who are here present, who await thy great and rich mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Lord, our merciful God, who loves mankind, to you is my glory, to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. Let us, the faithful, pray for the catechumens with all who are entering into the communion of this church this day, that the Lord may have mercy on them.
six winged seraphim covering their faces, singing the hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let all walk in the world, flesh be silent. And fear and trembling stand by me, not the earth and land. For the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, comes to be slain to give himself as food to the faithful. Before him will the ranks of the angels, all the principalities and powers, the many I share, the many six winged seraphim covering their faces, singing the hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia. Let all mortal flesh be silent. And in fear and trembling, stand by me, not the earth and mind. For the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, comes to be born, comes to be slain, to give himself as food to the faithful. Before him will the ranks of the angels, all the principalities and the powers, the many I cherubim, and the six beings here have been covering their faces, shaking their hands. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Good deep 
defends before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. Let us lift up our hearts. 
whether or not robbery to be equal to neither God the Father. He was God before the ages, yet he appeared upon the earth and lived among men, becoming incarnate of a holy virgin. He entered himself taking the form of a servant, being likened to the body of our loneliness, that he might liken us to the image of his glory. For as by man sin entered into the world, and by sin death, so it pleased that only begotten Son, who was in the bosom of thee, the God and Father, was born of a woman, the holy Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary, was born under the law to condemn sin in his flesh, that those who are dead in Adam might be made alive by like Christ himself. He lived in this world, and gave us commandments of salvation, producing us in the delusions of idolatry. He brought us to the knowledge of thee, the true God and Father. He obtained for us his own chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, having cleansed us of water and sanctified us with thy Holy Spirit. He gave himself as a ransom to death, in which we were held captive and sold under sin, descending through the cross into hell, that he might fill all things with himself. He loosed the pangs of death. He arose on the third day, having made for all flesh a path to the resurrection from the dead, that so it was not possible for the author of life to become a victim of corruption. So he became the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep, the first born of the dead, that he might be himself truly the first in all things. Ascending into heaven, he sat down at the right hand of my majesty and high, that he will come to render to every man according to his works, and as memorials of his saving passion, he has left us these things which we have set forth according to his command, when he was about to go forth to his voluntary and memorable and life creating death, in the night in which he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread into his holy and pure hands, and having shown it to thee, the God the Father, having given me thanks, blessed and hallowed it, and broken it, he gave it to us all the disciples and apostles, saying, Take eat, this is my body which is broken for you, for the remission of sin. Likewise, he took the cup of the fruit of the vine, and having mingled it and given thanks, blessed and hallowed it. He gave it to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin. proclaim my death to confess my resurrection. Therefore we also, Holy Master, remember the saving passion and life creating cross, his three day burial and resurrection from the dead, his ascension into heaven and sitting at the right hand of God and Father, and his glorious and awesome second coming. Thine own of thine own we offer unto thee in behalf of all and for me. This bread to be the precious body 
through our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. And this cup to be the precious blood of our Lord God and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Shed for the life of the world. Amen. Changing by the grace of thy most holy spirit. Amen. Amen. In that all of us, to one another, will become partakers of the one bread and cup in the communion of the most holy spirit. Let none of us be none of us partake of the holy body of thy Christ for judgment or to condemnation. Instead, may we find mercy and grace with all the saints and through all the ages have been well pleasing to thee. Ancestors, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and teachers, and every righteous spirit that has been made perfect in faith. Especially for our most holy, most pure, most blessed and glorious Lady, Theotokos, and ever Virgin Mary.
Among the first in Rivero Lord of Pietro the Metropolitan Tikon, His Eminence, our Archbishop Nathaniel, whom do thou grant in thy holy churches, in peace, safety, honor, health, and plenty of days, to rightly define the word of thy truth. Remember, Lord, your people. Remember, Lord, the Orthodox Epistle, to rightly define the word of thy truth. Remember, O Lord, my unworthiness also, for the multitude of thy compassions. Forgive my every transgression, both voluntary and involuntary. Because of my sins, do not withhold the grace of the Holy Spirit from these gifts that are here set forth. Remember, O Lord, the priesthood, the actor, and Christ, every order of the clergy, that none of us will stand about the holy altar and be put to confusion. Visit us with thy loving kindness, O Lord. Manifest thyself to us through thy rich compassions. Grant us seasonable and helpful weather. Send gentle showers upon the earth so that it may bear fruit. Bless the crown of the year with thy goodness. Prevent schisms among the churches, pacify the rations of pagans, quickly destroy the uprisings of heresies by the power of thy Holy Spirit. Receive us all into thy kingdom, showing us to be sons of light and sons of day. Grant us thy peace and thy love, O Lord, our God, for thou hast given all things unto us. We pray that with one mouth and one heart, we pray for the Lord, the majestic name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, now and ever and unto ages of ages. Amen. And the mercies of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ shall be with all of you. And with your spirit. Be remembered all the saints. Again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the mercy. For the gracious gifts offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. Lord
power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages.
beheld the resurrection of Christ by the word of the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. The cross of Lord, we adore the Holy
of faith unashamed, of love unfeigned, the fulfilling of wisdom, observing of thy divine, observing of thy commandments, receiving of thy divine grace, and the attaining of thy kingdom, preserved by them in thy holiness, may I always remember thy grace, and not for myself alone, but for thee our master and benefactor. May I pass from this life to the hope of eternal life, and so attain to everlasting rest, with the voice of those who feast is unceasing, and the gladness of those who behold the unspeakable beauty of thy countenance is unending, for thou art the true desire and ineffable joy of those who love you, O Christ our God, all creation sings thy praise forever. Amen. Thou hast granted us 
for the good and sanctification and healing of our souls and bodies. Do thou, O Master of all, grant that the communion of thy hope, the holy body and precious blood of thy Christ may be to us for a faith unashamed, a love unfeigned, an increase of wisdom, the healing of soul and body, the repelling of every adversary, the observing of thy commandments, and an acceptable defense at the dread judgment seat of thy Christ, for thou art our sanctification, and to thee we send the glory, to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. to the Lord. Oh, Lord, have mercy. O Lord, who blesses those who bless thee and sanctifies those who trust in thee, save thy people and bless thine inheritance, preserve the fullness of thy church, sanctify those who love the beauty of thy house, glorify them and return by thy divine power, and forsake us not and put our hope in thee. Give peace to thy world, to thy churches, to thy priests, and to all those in civil authority, and to all of thy people. For every good gift, and every perfect gift is from above, coming down from thee, the Father of lights. And unto thee we send a glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and unto ages of ages. Save us for as much as he is good and the lover. 